What's going on, everyone? This is Adam and Craig with Grand Sand Golf. In this show, we're talking our DFS sleepers for the 2020 Houston Open. We talked a little bit about the course in our DFS pick show, so make sure to check that out. It's at a new course this year, Memorial Park. Uh, I mean, lots of different information coming in. Yardage, I mean, there's different yardages posted all over the internet. Um, but we kind of broke down who we like and kind of the profile of golfer we like for Memorial Park from what we've heard. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. And for our sleepers, so we're going under 7,500 in DraftKings. Uh, like I always say, don't plug all these guys into your single lineup, but it's guys that we think are good values for where they are, um, possibly have more upside than other people at their, at their range. But my first, Christopher Ventura on DraftKings 7,300 on Vandal 8,800. Uh, Craig, you talked about him on our pod uh, quite a bit this past uh, episode we just released because of his... Uh, performance in Bermuda, but he's coming off kind of two brutal miscuts in the past a little bit. He had the Saturday miscut on Bermuda when he had that one mm-hmm. hole to go and he just ne- needed to make yeah, par, he right? He made a bogey. And then Shriners, I mean, which was crazy. He was five under and the cut moved to six under and he missed it. So to to be at five under and miss a cut is just absolutely ridiculous. The highest cut or the lowest cut we've ever seen in PGA Tour history. So those I kind of give him a pass for, but besides that, he has two top tens in the last five tournaments. So when he's on his game, I mean, he can climb up that leaderboard with kind of anybody. And the last two years, I mean, I kind of talked about it quite a bit in our DFS pick show, but I'm really leaning on these guys going off the tee, these ball strikers. He's top 30 in driving distance the last two years and top 15 in strokes, strokes and putting. So all the way from the tee box to the green, he's getting it done. Yeah, I think so. I mean, at least as far as I'm concerned, there's there's kind of different kinds of sleepers down here. There's ones who, mm-hmm. you know, you think they're fairly safe cut makers and and you hope that with a very solid lineup everywhere else, they get something like a 20th or a, you know, a 15th, then it's going to be the thing that, that yeah. clinches it for you. And then there's guys that like, you know, might have legitimate chances to win or top five or top 10. And I think Venture is one of those ones where he can, he can be a way up that leaderboard potentially yeah i mean we kind of talked about guys like evr or cameron davis kind of a little bit higher price than him i think they he's on the similar track to him a little bit discounted uh but probably doesn't have as yeah. good a chance and, and, to and a, a, probably a bit of a worse floor compared to those guys you know yeah right yeah yeah um so my first one here uh cameron tringale uh, he, you know, he's 7,300. He's 42nd most expensive on DraftKings. He's 8,800 on FanDuel. Uh, you know, I, I was saying that Dustin Johnson is back in this tournament. Steak is back on the menu. You, you got to find, if you want to <laughs> pay for the steak, you got to find ways to save money. And maybe that's just yeah. getting the free breadsticks that come with the come with the dinner, whatever it is. <laughs> but uh, to me, so that might be Tringale. He, he's a cut maker. He... <laughs> He's, you know, looking back the last three seasons, so so 2019 season made 16 to 21. This past year that was COVID short and made 14 to 17. He's only got two of four yeah. so far in this short year, but like similar to Ventura, one of those he just missed by one at Bermuda, and then he missed by two yeah. at Safeway. So it's not exactly like he's ever yeah. gotten blown out. Um, to me, it's yeah. just he's he's really rock solid. He's so 42nd most expensive. He's 11th in strokes gained total for the full 2020 season at at right. you know almost almost a three quarters of a stroke. Call it um, almost 0.8. Yeah, um, that's pretty much yeah. what he is so far in 2021 too. So to me, it's just really he's really rock solid and steady um and then when he does make cuts he's oftentimes getting up into the upper half of it which is which is what i was saying you, you know if you make a cut and yeah. finish 60 a sweet you still got those weekend points but it's it's a lot better if you're actually working your way up into the the upper quarter of the field say uh and so for in sure. five of yeah. ten starts since covid he's been tied for 37th or better um so half the time he's up in that top quarter of the field. Uh, that also includes yeah. one of those ten starts is when he had a DQ for missigning his scorecard. So you know he's he's dealt with a lot. He's <laughs> yeah. dealt with a lot oh this year. God. But uh, I just like him. I yeah, think it's no great kidding. value. Um, I, I like him as well. I, I feel like that picture is a little bit intimidating. I feel like he's staring right into my soul and he's giving me that yeah. look. But I like him. This Are you flustered? <laughs> I am a little bit flustered. Look at him, just staring yeah. right at me. He feels like. <laughs> Uh, the next guy I like is a sleeper, Luke List, 7,000 on DraftKings. On FanDuel, he's 8,400, 54th on both. 
Uh, most people that have been playing DFS for a while know kind of Luke Liss. He, he can be that DFS darling, but I mean, he's kind of had a, a rocky go the last little bit. But he's still fourth in the field in strokes gain off the tee. He he pounds the ball. He drives it a mile off the tee. Uh, it opens up plenty of scoring mm-hmm. opportunities. But on the back end, he's in a huge putting slump. He ranks 252nd on the PGA Tour. That doesn't Tour seem very good. Putting this year. <laughs> it's not good at all. It's it's horrible. It, it's really, really bad. There's no two ways about it. Um, but that is something that, I mean, he's been playing in quite a few tournaments. If he can kind of just find a stroke for a few days or at least get into the weekend or possibly all four days, he he's one of the few people, 7,000 or under, that can actually go out and win this yeah. thing. I mean, he, he does have that ball striking ability. And when I'm looking at a new course and I, we don't have all the details, uh, it is a little bit longer. I want to take those guys that will put themselves in good position off the tee, and that's Luke List. Uh, he can maybe get hot in the green. Maybe he's going to stay 252nd. But I think if he just can kind of get into the – hundredth top hundred kind of average putting i think he has a really high uh ceiling. yeah there's there's not many people that look up at like look up at hideki and emilio grio and um <laughs> you yeah. know there's not many people Corey connors there's not many people looking up at them on the on the putting standings but i guess luke list is one of them um yeah he's I mean, he, to me he's he's also a very volatile but very high upside so if those are the kind of guys you want in this price range then i think he's he's one you definitely want to look at Maybe he can hang out with Sergio. That he can Closing talk about eyes. Closing his eyes. Getting that feel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, my next guy here, Matthew Neesmith. Uh, he's coming in at 7000 same price as Luke List on DraftKings, and he is 8300 on FanDuel, good for 54th and 58th. Uh, to me, it's just a pure value play. He's in pretty good form. He, you know, so far this season in this field, uh, he's 14th in strokes gained tee to green uh, and 12th yeah. in strokes gained total. Um, recent form he's top 20 in his last two tournaments he has made the cut in five of his last seven so uh, to me right. it's just you know he, he had been a little bit up and down since the after the restart uh, but it looks like he's coming into form for this fall season he's one of these grinders and uh, I just I think it's going to continue he you know last full season the, the sort of the thing he hangs his hat on as a player uh, is 23rd and this is not in this field this is in in the whole tour 23rd oh, in strokes in gain approach yep. and 22nd in, in GIR so you know he's the kind of guy similar to a, a a lot of the people I was talking about in our other video, like a Russell Henley, where yeah. it's really about the pro- approach play and it's about giving yourself opportunities to make birdies. Uh, it, I think it's yeah. going to be a lot of birdies out there. So if he if he can hit the ball well into greens and make some birdies, then I, I think he has the potential to work his way back into a top 20 this week. I also think uh, just based on name recognition for Lucas and Neesmith, at, both at 7,000, I think Neesmith is a nice pivot off list who is probably more recognizable for people playing uh so i like him kind of as an ownership pivot he as does well. surprisingly have he's one of these guys similar to almost a sebastian munoz where mm-hmm. i think the analytics people love him because he he does flash good like strokes gain total strokes gain t to green which is oftentimes yeah. what people are looking at um yeah. So, you know, I, I played him a bit after the restart and, and his ownership surprised me sometimes that it was higher than, than I'd expected. Okay. But I, I still just think it's it's good value down there. It, it's still early in the week. Got to figure out where the ownership's going to be. But yeah, I yeah. like the play. Uh, my last sleeper, Carlos Ortiz, 6,700 on DraftKings, 8,100 on FanDuel, 68 and 66. I just feel like he's he's off to, again, a pretty good start to the 2020-2021 season. Uh, like I was talking about earlier with Ventura, he, he's missed cuts, but it's either on the number or by by one. So again, he's not getting blown out. He's right there. He's a he's a stroke or a couple strokes away from playing the weekend, and then who knows what's going to happen uh, from there on out. But what I like about him at 6,700 is he's positive off the tee, he's positive on approach, and he's positive around the green. So again, new course, we don't know what's going to happen, but when you're checking kind of all those boxes, it, it feels like. Perhaps not as huge as upside as we have with the other guys in this list, but it seems like a pretty good floor um, at 6,700. And the other thing I like, I mean, 
not necessarily in Houston, but he went to school in Texas. I think I think the guys who have played in Texas for a while, for a number of years, have a little bit of advantage just because courses can kind of have a similar feel around yeah, here. Yeah, and you have to deal with those Texans, so he's got experience with it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I, I like Ortiz a lot of the time. Um, I think he's going to be in my lineups. I, I, I just think he's, yeah. he's oftentimes a good value down here. Yeah. My last one here, Sepp Straka. He... Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> He comes in at 7,000 on DraftKings, good for 54th, and FanDuel 8,400. So, you know, similar price to Neesmith and List. Uh, he, to me, he's just, he's one of these guys where it's just value. Like, if I want to plug in a, a Dustin Johnson or Tony Finau, and then I go and get one or yeah. two of these guys, I can do whatever I want with the rest of my lineup. Um, yeah. Since the restart, he, he's made 10 of 15 cuts, so he's making a lot of cuts, four of his last five. So, you know, he's in good form making cuts recently. But one of the things I was yep. looking at a little bit further, so seven of those 15, he's actually tied for 33rd or better. So it's not that he's just making cuts. He's actually working his way up into yep. the top half of the of he's the people up. who make the cuts. In half the tournaments, right. he's in the you know top quarter of the field. So uh, to me, it's yep. just it's a pure value play. Um Mm -hmm. the thing so you know always what do these guys hang their hat on he's a ball striker you look at so far this season he's gaining uh you know just over 0.7 strokes uh so this ball striking is off the tee and approach added together um you know 2020 full season he was gaining just under a half and, and 2019 full season he was similar to what he's been doing so far this year so to me those are just it's one of the ones that's most consistent week to week usually um you can get a lot more volatility mm-hmm. with other unless you're one of the top putters it's usually something that ping pongs a bit uh so to me yeah. having a good ball striker it's the type of thing that makes it easier for you to make a lot of cuts and uh, yeah so yeah 100 percent I always think when I think of ball striking, Substrack is always in there as kind of a value play for a mm-hmm. ball striker. Okay, quickly recapping. So I have Ventura at 7,300 on DraftKings, Luke List 7,000, and Carlos Otis 6,700. And I've got Cameron Tringali at 7,300, Matthew Neesmith at 7,000, and Substrack at 7,000. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Uh, we will be doing our Twitch show 9 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday. Grandstand Golf is our username. We go through everyone here. So here's just kind of a collection of some of our favorite sleepers, but we really go in depth in the entire field. Uh, it was a really cool conversation with the Bermuda Championship. We were talking Wyndham Clark. The, we were talking the sleepers Oli were Schneider awesome. Gen. I mean, I think we had good the, sleeper picks last week, uh, but then just the community of people chatting had really good ideas. Yeah. The Grandstand Golf community is kind of growing and growing, so please come join. Come with the questions. Uh, I mean, it's. I think we're all kind of helping each other and getting good lineups out there. So it's really cool. Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Yep. Eastern. Take care, guys. We'll see you next time.